The Vice of Impurity by St. Alphonsus de Liguri Among the four principal gates of hell, which includes hatred, blasphemy, theft, and impurity, it is by the gate of impurity that the greater number of the damned enter. Some will say that it is a trifling sin. Is it a trifling sin? It is a mortal sin. St. Antoninus writes that such is the nauseousness of this sin that the devils themselves cannot endure it. Moreover, the doctors of the church say that certain demons who have been superior to the rest, remembering their ancient dignity, disdain tempting to so loathsome a sin. Consider then how disgusting he must be to God, who like a dog is ever returning to his vomit, or wallowing like a pig in the stinking mire of this accursed vice. The dog is returned to his vomit, and the sow that was washed to her rolling in the mire. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. The impure say, moreover, God has compassion on us, who are subject to this vice because he knows that we are flesh. What do you say? God has compassion on this vice. But you must know that the most horrible chastisements with which God has ever visited the earth have been drawn down by this vice. St. Jerome says that this is the only sin of which we read, that it caused God to repent him of having made man. It repented him that had made man, for all flesh had corrupted its way. Genesis chapter 6, verses 6 to 12. Wherefore it is, St. Jerome says, that there is no sin which God punishes so rigorously, even upon earth, as this. He once sent fire from heaven upon five cities and consumed all their inhabitants for this sin. Principally on account of this sin did God destroy mankind with the exception of eight persons by the deluge. It is a sin which God punishes not only in the other life but in this also. In confirmation of this, you have only to enter the hospitals and see there the many poor young men who were once strong and robust but are now weak, squalid, full of pains, tormented with lancets and caustic and ulcers all through this accursed vice. Because thou hast forgotten me, and cast me off behind thy back, bear thou also thy wickedness and thy fornications. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse 35. Because, says God, you have forgotten me, and turned your back upon me, for a miserable pleasure of the flesh, I am resolved that even in this life you shall pay the forfeit of your wickedness. You say, God has compassion upon men subject to this sin, but it is this sin that sends most men to hell. St. Remigius says that the greater number of the damned are in hell through this vice. Father Signori writes that as this vice fills the world with sinners, so it fills hell with damned souls. And before him, St. Bernardine of Siena wrote, this sin draws the whole world, as it were, into sin. And before him, St. Bernard, St. Isidore said that the human race is brought under the power of the devil more by lust than by all the other vices. The reason is because this vice proceeds from the natural inclination of the flesh. Hence the angelic doctor says that the devil does not take such complacency in securing the commission of any other sin as of this, because the person who is plunged in this infernal mire remains fast therein and almost wholly unable to free himself more. No one is so obstinate in sin as the impure, says St. Thomas of Villanova. Moreover, this vice deprives one of all light, for the impure man becomes so blind as almost wholly to forget God, says St. Lawrence Justinian, which is in accordance with what is said by the prophet Osei. They will not set their thoughts to return to their God, for the spirit of fornication is in the midst of them, and they have not known God. O.C. Chapter 5, Verses 4 The impure man knows not God. He obeys neither God nor reason, as St. Jerome says. He obeys only the sensual appetite, which causes him to act like the beast. This sin, because it flatters, makes us fall at once into the habit of it, a habit which some carry with them even to death. You see husbands and decrepit old men indulge in the same thoughts and committing the same sins that they committed in their youth. And because sins of this kind are so easily committed, they become multiplied without number. Ask of the sinner how many impure thoughts he has consented to. He will tell you he cannot remember. But brother, if you cannot tell the number, God can. 
and you know that a single immodest thought is enough to send you to hell. How many immodest words have you spoken in which you took delight yourself and by which you scandalized your neighbor? From thoughts and words you proceed to acts and to those innumerable impurities which those wretches roll and wallow in like swine without ever being satisfied, for this vice is never satisfied. But Father, you will say, how can I hold out against the innumerable temptations which assail me? I am weak. I am flesh. And since you are weak, why not recommend yourself to God and to Most Holy Mary, who is the Mother of Purity? Since you are flesh, why do you throw yourself in the way of sin? Why do you not mortify your eyes? Why do you gaze upon those objects whence temptations flow? Saint Aloysius never raised his eyes to look even upon his mother. It is to be remarked, moreover, that this sin brings with it innumerable others. Enmities, thefts, and more especially sacrilegious confessions and communions by reason of the shame, which will not allow these impurities to be disclosed in confession. And let us remark here in passing that it is sacrilege above all things that brings upon us sickness and death. For, says the Apostle, he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh judgment to himself, not discerning the body of the Lord. And then he adds, Therefore are many infirm and weak among you. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 29. And St. John Chrysostom, in explanation of that passage, says that St. Paul speaks of persons who were chastised with bodily infirmities because they received the sacrament with a guilty conscience. My brethren, should you ever have been sunk in this vice, I do not bid you be disheartened, but arise at once from this foul and infernal pit. Beg of God forthwith to give you light and stretch out his hand to you. The first thing that you have to do is to break with the occasion of sin. Without that, preaching and tears and resolutions and confessions, all are lost. Remove the occasions and then constantly recommend yourself to God and to Mary, the mother of purity. No matter how grievously you may be tempted, do not be discouraged by the temptation. At once, call to your aid Jesus and Mary, pronouncing their sacred names. These blessed names have the virtue of making the devil fly and stifling that hellish flame within you. If the devil persist in tempting you, persevere in calling upon Jesus and Mary and certainly you shall not fall. In order to rid yourself of your evil habits, undertake some special devotion to Our Lady. Begin to fast in her honor upon Saturdays. Contrive to visit her image every day and beg of her to obtain for you deliverance from that vice. Every morning immediately after rising, never omit saying three Hail Marys, which is explained in detail at the end of this video, in honor of her purity, and do the same when going to bed. And above all things, as I have said, when the temptation is most troublesome, call quickly upon Jesus and Mary. Beware, brother, if you do not be converted now, you may never be converted. The Three Hail Mary Devotion is the first thing that one should pray immediately after rising, and the last thing before going to bed. Among many saints like St. Mechtilde, St. Anthony of Padua, St. Leonard of Port Maurice, the most prominent saint who promoted this devotion is the great doctor of the church and the doctor of moral theology, St. Alphonsus Liguri. He talks about this devotion in his beautiful book, The Glories of Mary. You can check the description for the PDF of this book. This prayer is said by praying three Hail Marys in honor of the three divine persons of the Blessed Trinity, adding in between each Hail Mary, O Mary, by thy pure and immaculate conception, make my body pure and my soul holy. St. Alphonsus recommends that everyone recite this prayer, prostrate, or at least kneeling. After saying the three Hail Marys, as St. Stanislaus always did, we should ask Mary's blessing as our mother and place ourselves under the mantle of her protection, beseeching her to guard us during the coming day or night from sin. For this purpose, it is advisable to have a beautiful picture or image of the Blessed Virgin. Throughout centuries, many have found this practice to be extremely efficacious in overcoming mortal sin, especially in fighting the sins against the virtue of chastity. There is no one who runs to the Blessed Mother is ever lost. 
for she will never allow us to offend her divine Son, the dearest object of her love. Let us pray with confidence and invoke her powerful intercession, for the devil has already lost the battle. Let us conclude this video by praying the three Hail Marys. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. By the power granted thee by the Eternal Father. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mary, by thy pure and immaculate conception, make my body pure and my soul holy. My mother, preserve me this day or night from mortal sin. By the wisdom granted thee by the Son. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mary, by thy pure and immaculate conception, make my body pure and my soul holy. My mother, preserve me this day or night from mortal sin. By the love granted thee by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mary, by thy pure and immaculate conception, make my body pure and my soul holy. My mother, preserve me this day or night from mortal sin. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.